generates a huge amount of heat and a huge amount of smoke, and it burns very fast. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost explosive. According to the U.S. Fire Administration, over 400 fires occur in homes from trees or other decorations over the holidays. Bismarck Fire Marshal Ron Kunda says that locally, the few fires that do happen during the cold months are usually cooking related. But holiday decorations such as lights should still be checked every year. If they were marginal last year and you're thinking you can try to get one more year out of them, you might want to consider getting new lights again. To avoid a fire, check your lights for frayed wires, which can be extremely hazardous. And Kunda cautions overloading electrical outlets with too many lights. You want to make sure that you aren't hooking up more lights in series than what is recommended. Turning off your lights before you go to sleep or leave the house is especially important. But perhaps even more important is attending to the Christmas tree itself. The difference between a well-maintained watered tree and an unwatered tree can be explosive. Dan Cashman of Bismarck's Cashman's Nursery says there are some important steps to take before even bringing your tree indoors. Uh, but you want to make a fresh cut on flowers just before you put them in water. You want to make a fresh cut on this thing just before you put it in water. Because if they leave them for a week or three days, they'll get gummy on the bottom and they won't drink. After that, keep your tree well watered and away from heat sources. And you can do a simple test to check your tree's health. If you run your hand on the back of it and they go tinkle, 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 falling all over, you got yourself a problem. You don't want to turn your Christmas season into a tragedy because of a fire. That's all it takes. It's just that one minute. In Bismarck, Matt Hopper, NBC, North Dakota News. Readers in specific uh, have exploded. E-readers were the cool gift this season, and they're using that holiday momentum to try and get regular readers to switch from paper to digital screens. But they can read it anytime, anywhere. And if you want it the day it releases, you can get it. The costs do vary. Certainly if you're buying an expensive hardcover, you know, the cost savings are typically really significant. Now Amazon's Kindle has made the move with the Barnes & Noble Nook to allow readers to lend their books. Readers can share their books with anyone they know in the United States. And better yet, Excuse you me. don't even have to own a Kindle. Amazon is making digital reading applications for almost any mobile device. And if you don't have a mobile phone, there's even an application for the computer. But it's not quite enough to have the print world shaking in their boots. Readers can only lend for 17 days. Only certain books are lendable. And did I mention all the instructions there are to go through? Nonetheless, it's a step in the right direction. So whether you're interested in doing it to be green or just for the cool factor, it could be a long time before e-readers replace the book. There's, there's benefits to both. Certainly at times when a person was traveling or a person had, a, had minimal space constraints, the e-reader the e is great, but there's certainly a, a nostalgic factor that will always be with a book that's a good book that you've had, that you've owned, and so I, I like both. There's no question about it. Truer words were never spoken. In Bismarck, Matt Hopper, NBC, North Dakota News. Good morning and welcome to Country Morning Today. It's Thursday, June 23rd. I'm Matt Hopper. Joel is off today. The past 24 hours have been surreal. If you're one of the lucky ones who still have the comfort of watching the coverage from home, no doubt you've been glued to your television set. One of the most powerful shots came from Hog Island yesterday, where many bared witness to the power of the raging river. South north of Bismarck and south of Double Ditch was surrounded with a protective wall, but nothing could prevent what came from beneath. It's the latest casualty of the Missouri River. So stay tuned, we'll be checking in with KMOT's Nick Dreyer in just a moment. But first, today's weather headlines from Cliff. Cliff, how does it look like it's going to be out there today? Well, uh, right now, uh, the more thunderstorms moving on in. Okay, well, at least they get just a little bit of break, a little small wind. About 18 break. hours here. Take anything they can get. Yeah. All right, thanks, Cliff. Now we're going to turn our focus to Minot, where Nick Dreyer is waiting by at our KMOT studio. Nick, I'd say good morning, but I know you've been up for a while, so I don't really know where you're at. We'll just toss it to you, Nick. <laughs> All right, well, nice to see you, Matt. It is going to be another day of watching this river slowly rise and now uh, filling up homes in Minot. Okay, well, thanks, Nick. We'll check back with you in just a little bit for more updates. AT&T cell phone customers in North Dakota have been experiencing problems ever since AT&T merged with Altel. Many customers are complaining about calls not going through, poor reception, and dead spots where calls used to work before the merger. 
in addition to general hiccups resulting from the business transition. Public service commissioners say a major problem AT&T is dealing with involves phone technology that's different from what's used by Altel, Verizon, and other phones. The PSC says there's not much it can do because it's mostly under the jurisdiction of the FCC. On behalf of consumers. Clark recommends that customers shop around and compare AT&T plans with other companies. An AT&T spokesman recommends that customers stick with AT&T because the company is aggressively addressing problems by adding new cell sites and enhancing capacity. The first case of West Nile virus was reported last week in Towner County and officials are already seeing a rise in their counts of mosquitoes that generally carry the virus. Officials regularly track and Count the mosquitoes throughout the state using traps that attract the insects with incandescent lights. The state Health Department collects data and numbers from these traps every week to monitor the numbers and evaluate risks to certain areas. Experts say one mosquito species a major concern is already starting to hatch. In late July to early August. Mosquitoes are the most active at dawn and dusk and Pavlish recommends not being outside at these times or if you have to be outside to use a bug repellent to protect yourself. More than 80 riders will saddle up this weekend in Wilton to have some fun and raise money for the Bismarck Cancer Center. The fourth annual Saddle Up Against Cancer event was started by a Wilton woman who lost her son to an incurable blastoma brain tumor. Each year, family and friends of Marshall Erickson and even strangers ride on the first weekend of August and raise around $4,000 for the center. When we saw how Marshall was treated by the Bismarck Cancer Center, we just wanted to give back because they were great. They, were, they treated him so nice and they did everything they could for him and, and the family. Registration begins at 9.30 Saturday morning at the Noon Farm in Wilton with the ride starting at 10. It's free, but donations are suggested. There will also be a silent auction, lunch, and entertainment. Matt Hopper has the preview. Matt? Well, that's right. By splitting Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows into two parts, many are saying this final installment is more action-packed and better than any of the previous films we've seen so far. So why not see for yourself? Here's a preview. It's all been leading up to this, the boy wizard's final battle against the ultimate evil in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. One decade has passed since the first installment of the series, now Harry Potter and his friends plunge into an all-out wizard war. Wizards make the ultimate sacrifice in this final installment as they look to stop the evil Lord Voldemort once and for all. It's an action-packed fantasy adventure for the first time in 3D. The conclusion of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows is rated PG-13. And that's what's coming to theaters this weekend. Come on, Tom. Let's finish this the way we started. Together! Now, Harry Potter will be playing at both the Carmike Cinemas and the Grand Theaters. And tonight, the Grand holds to plan a special double feature starting at 9 o'clock. They'll be playing both the first and last part of the Deathly Hallow movies. Lines are sure to be long this weekend, but I have something just for that. See, I... I think I think Joel I think Joel he might have missed this at one of the last yard sales he was at, but I have my very own invisibility cloak. <laughs> oh, there you go! So you can, can get it, get it right in line, Matt. Make it into the theaters, Courtney Joel. Matt, our producer, is going. They're both going to be competing in a yes. pie eating contest. There you go. Pies here. I brought you something here, Joel. So, hey, great. <laughs> Matt, this nothing, giant pie we have right here. <laughs> nothing nothing better than pie at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, which oh, is what I always say. I didn't yeah. bring the ice cream. I didn't think you wanted to go that far. <laughs> yeah, I think Ella Mo might be a little tough. They're delicious. These are actually supplied by Central Market, so okay. Okay. enjoy. All mm -hmm. right. All right. So, you guys, you're going to put your hands behind your back. <laughs> and Watch Joel, the ties. you scooch down just a little teeny tiny bit. I think right mine's now. bigger than Matt's here. I, don't know what's <laughs> yeah. I think so, too. There there you go. Go. I think mine outweighs his okay, by maybe about eight cups or so. And I'm going to do a countdown from three. And you guys are just going to dig right in, OK? Well, I have a good feeling about this one. Are you ready? I don't know. I think he's going to bump into me. <laughs> OK. Three, two, one, go. Go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think our laughing is not helping. I know. Though. Probably not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, come on guys.